Hello and thanks for listening. This will be a space brief. Today was a momentous occasion. The SpaceX Starship Serial Number 10, named third times the charm by Felix Schlong over at What About It, an excellent channel for current SpaceX updates, by the way, launched from South Texas and landed safely. This is a turning point in the history of humanity. Let's look at what happened. Here you see the Starship getting ready for launch. There was a flight termination system, or FTS, on board in case something went wrong. This is a detonation system to destroy the ship if it had gone too far off course. The three engines will fire at about 72% throttle. Full thrust at sea level is about 2,200,000 newtons per engine, so 6,600,000 newtons total. That means at 72% thrust, they will have about 4,750,000 newtons. If the Starship has a dry mass of 120 tons and we disregard fuel mass, that would throw it into the sky at almost 40 meters per second squared, or about 4 Gs. We see them start to launch and have an abort after less than a second of engine fire. This was due to one of the engines showing too much power when it ignited. And here we will see the difference between SpaceX and everyone else. The space launch system would have been grounded for six months or so while everyone calculated and recalculated what to do. You can't take any chances with the system when you only have one of them and it costs you over $10 billion. But if you are producing them on an assembly line for a few million each and you're a billionaire, you can simply remove the propellant, reprogram the computer to accept the higher thrust and try again. Here we see the final countdown. And the ship lifting from the launch pad. I estimated they would need at least 100 tons of propellant to bring the acceleration down to 21.6 meters per second squared or 2.2 Gs. The normal 1.5 G liftoff that most companies prefer would require a little more than 200,000 kilograms of propellant. Here we see the launch and all three engines are burning at minimum throttle. Now if the specific impulse of the engine is 330 seconds, that means the mass propellant flow to produce 4,750,000 newtons of thrust would be about 1,467 kilograms per second total, or 489 kilograms per second per engine. So every second of operation, this thing loses about 1.5 tons of mass. That means it will reach an acceleration of 28 meters per second squared, or 2.85 g. This will start to put a lot of strain on the ship and may make it climb too high. For that reason, they will shut off one engine and go on two. Now gravity drag will subtract 9.81 meters per second squared from the change in velocity. So the ship will be accelerating at 18.2 meters per second squared. But the strain will be at the higher number. They will have calculated all this beforehand and will have launched with enough fuel to get the job done and a matching amount of oxidizer with enough extra added to provide ballast to control the flight and prevent too rapid acceleration. They will vent excess oxygen as they burn fuel and oxygen hovering. They can't vent extra fuel because the military calls that a fuel air explosive, like the mother of all bombs or Moab. This would be unpleasant to say the least for everyone in the general area. When the mass is just right, they will allow the ship to start falling.
Here we see the first engine shut down, leaving two running. Two engines produce 4,400,000 newtons of thrust at full throttle and 3,168,000 newtons at minimum throttle of 72%. These two engines, calculating the propellant mass expended, should provide 18.6 meters per second squared, or about 1.9 g stress. The acceleration after gravity drag is 8.79 meters per second squared. After expending more propellant mass, they have to shut down one more engine, as we see here. The final engine can provide 2,200,000 newtons of thrust, and if they have burned 70 tons of propellant mass, that thrust would give them 7.2 meters per second squared acceleration. This will not counteract the force of gravity, and they would start to fall. If the propellant mass is down to only 40 tons, so the total mass of the ship is 160 tons, they could hover with one engine at 72%. If the total mass of the propellant at this point is as high as 100 tons, with a total mass for the ship of 220 tons, they can increase the throttle of the final engine to full power and produce 10 meters per second squared acceleration, nicely offsetting the 9.81 meters per second squared of gravity and allowing the ship to hover. I think we see here that they are basically hovering and burning off any unneeded propellant mass, while venting unneeded liquid oxygen mass. Throttling down the engine as needed as the ship gets lighter. And here we see it tip. And start its glide. The fore and aft flaps go from neutral to the fall position and the ship falls with the greatest surface area toward the airflow, reducing the terminal velocity. If you want to see how terminal velocity works, please watch this lesson. The ship falls gracefully and lights all three engines this time, performing the flip maneuver perfectly. It lands just a little hard, which I think compressed the crush legs on one side a little more than the other. I don't know if it has any self-leveling systems, but it stays upright. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is history. You have now seen the first successful landing of an orbital-class starship. Congratulations to all the hard-working people at SpaceX. Thanks for listening, and stay safe at Astro Proterra.